Hello, this is Paul Check again, and welcome to Freedom Part 2. Our inspiration for the little Freedom series is The Art Spirit by Robert Henry. Excellent, great, amazing book written by a very wise man. To review where we started, our main working statement by Robert Henry, which I really think is absolutely true, is freedom can only be obtained through an understanding of basic order. Freedom can only be obtained through an understanding of basic order. Basic order is underlying all life. This means, quite simply, if you do not master the basics of whatever it is that you want to express yourself through, dance, music, medicine, exercise, food, cooking, nutrition. If you don't understand the basics and you try to dabble in the complexities, chances of you ever really achieving your potential are not good because the basics are the foundation of all complexities. Simplicity gives birth to complexity. So once we want to explore the concept of what does it take for me to truly be free as a person, then really the biggest first step is to figure out well, what are the basics that I need to master and then get cracking. And as you go step by step, a woman that knows how to cook is confident in a kitchen. A man that knows how to work with a car and tools has a sense of self-value and self-worth as a man or, you know, as a metaphor. So that said, our goal today is look at some of the issues of basics that are helpful to master so that we can enjoy freedom. In part one, I talked about unconditional love as pure potential. Here we're going to call that Tao. Although that is true, it is also true that the word Tao is, is, in, is inclusive of all that is. So oftentimes when people refer to the Tao, they, they, they think they're referring to something equivalent to God or the invisible or the unknowable. And though that is true, the Tao is all-inclusive of that which is known and knowable. So just know that unconditional love, the absolute, is inclusive of all things and all experiences. Therefore, Tao is really paradoxically first-order creation. In Taoism or Chinese philosophy, the term te means da, which means the creation. So we talk about two, Tai Chi, male and female, yin and yang, the entanglement of creation, where I said that things are not just yin, not just yang, but that all things that are created are borrowed from unconditional love as a credit, and what goes up eventually has to come down and that is the inevitable reality that creates the cycles of life. T-E-D-A means the creation. That means existence itself, the universe, whatever you uh, agree with yourself, existence includes. That's that. Then we went to the third level, or the third principle, which I said was self-consciousness, where a sentient being is interacting with the environment and knows that they can or can choose not to do something. For example, beavers build dams not because they're sitting there thinking, well, should I build a dam today? That would be like a killer whale thinking, should I go eat some salmon today? Well, when a killer whale's hungry, if there's salmon around, they get eaten. And if a beaver needs a dam, then dams get built. Third level creation is when you are aware that you can choose to or not to do something. You can choose to pick the garbage up or leave it on the floor. You can choose to create beauty or you can choose to complain about how shitty the world is. That's third level participation or third level creation, which automatically becomes co-creation because once you're aware that you have the power to choose, once you're aware that you have the power to create, you're now tapping into the potential which gives us the polarity or the sex energy to be able to act out whatever show we want to put energy to or whatever dance or tune we want to sing. 
Okay, so now in my system of teachings, I have a very simple overview, which is like anything simple. The Tai Chi symbol is very simple, but it's, it can take you lifetimes to figure out what it really means. One, first, we must remember that unconditional love never says no. So the first and most simple thing to master is realize that whatever you choose to create or believe becomes your reality. <laughs> so your first basic to master is remembering that whatever this thing focuses on and energizes, it, it begins manifesting immediately. So one love in my system means get clear what it is that you're living for, you're willing to grow for, you're willing to change for, and focus yourself on developing the values and the lifestyle that are dream affirmative as opposed to wandering around every day complaining because you never have time to do what you want to do or you know all the poor me songs most of the poor me songs are the dream because people put far more energy into the poor me songs than they do into their own dream and naturally unconditional love says yes to all the complaining and that's exactly what you get Two, remember there's two forces to deal with. That's our second level of creation. Anything that you can create has to come by way of mind, whether it be a state of no mind, as we talked about the natural mind in the first, or your conscious mind. So the first reality we're gonna remember with the second level, or Tai Chi, is that mind is driving manifestation. Mind is giving you the opportunity to look at something and and segregate this from that, is from isn't. So at the level of two, we must become aware of what those two forces are, not only at the level of mind, but at the level of embodiment, and how do we master the basic principles, and I talked in the last uh, discussion about cycles and you know some of the relevant things there. That, that could go on for hours and hours, that conversation. Three choices to make. The basics of being free is to know that you really only have three basic choices in relationship to any person, place, or thing. The optimal choice, which is best for everybody on your dream team. The suboptimal choice, which usually causes pain for somebody on your dream team or eventually you, but gives instant gratification. And is still a great opportunity to learn because every time you do that, you usually get some kind of negative feedback if you make a, a suboptimal choice that encourages you to think, uh, about how to make better choices if you really want to get your dream created and live it efficiently. Then the third choice is to do nothing. So you've got the optimal, the best one for you and your dream team, the suboptimal, the one that gives instant gratification but usually causes some resistance. And then the third choice is to do nothing. Doing nothing has a positive and a negative element. The negative element is apathy, to not participate in your life, and to not take responsibility for what you have created or are creating that's an illness. Um, the next one is to choose to do nothing or call a timeout when you need more information to make a well-informed decision. That's the positive use of doing nothing. So in relationship to any person, place, or thing, we really only have three choices. The optimal, the suboptimal, and do nothing. Four, we all need to master four doctors because those four doctors, Dr. Quiet, Dr. Diet, Dr. Movement, and Dr. Happiness, really are not physical doctors, like you go to the doctor's office, thank God. They're the inner doctor. They're, that's the wisdom of your own instincts and your own intuition and even your own imagination and certainly your own intelligence. But those doctors only work for people who are honest with themselves and who listen to their inner impulse and have a reason bigger than themselves to gather up their potential to become a whole creative loving, inventive, artistic, exciting person. So once you know what your dream is, and you know who you've chosen to create yourself as or to be in this lifetime, those four doctors are easy to listen to because they're only there to tell you when you're wandering off your own path of optimally living and loving, which is what we're all here to do. But again, those doctors, Dr. Happiness, what is my dream? Dr. Quiet, Dr. Diet, Dr. Movement, what do I need to do with me on a daily basis to support my ability to effectively live and achieve the dream? So there's the four doctors. Five basic elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether, which is space. 
no matter what profession you're in, no matter what um, hobby you have, art, dance, singing, crafts, photography, the basics of everything we do uh, that I would refer to as earth play, working or playing here on earth, the basics all will relate to earth, water, fire, air, and space. If you're learning to be a pilot, you're going to have to learn about a lot about the earth, a lot about water, a lot about fire, lightning, light, air, and space. If you want to be an artist, you need to learn about earth, water, fire, air, and space. If you want to be a physical therapist, you need to learn about the earth element, structure, the water element, rhythm, throw, flow, pressure, pulse. You need to learn about fire, metabolism, and the use of one's will. You need to learn about air, breathing, oxidization, uh, again, metabolism, and uh, you know all the effects that air and breathing can have on the mind which are, or the body, which are many. And then you need to learn about space because spatial relationships, such as poor ergonomics, cause tremendous problems. So therapists need to know a lot about how these things relate. Most people in our culture go right up to the fancy dancey stuff. They're already trying to do tricky, amazing art stuff or tricks on their bicycles or whatever, but they still have not learned the very basics. So it's really, really wise to learn the basics first, and you can have a lot of fun learning the basics, and you find out miraculously those who that have mastered the basics turn out to be surprisingly advanced. <laughs> Foundation principles, there's only six foundation principles that I believe we need to master as a general theme for our own health and vitality, which is our freedom. Three of them are yin, nutrition, hydration, and sleep. Three, yang, breathing, thinking, and moving. So you take the six out of the two. The two, yin and yang, tai chi, become four as four doctors, become six as foundation principles. If you don't have a mastery of nutrition, hydration, sleep, breathing, thinking, and moving, I can assure you, no matter what your endeavor is, from dance to art to music to singing to being a doctor, you're missing a huge component of your potential because each one of those is a major player in all the other functions of the body and the mind. Seven body-mind basic themes or essential themes to master in life. This is the chakra system. So we must be brave enough to master the essentials of safety and security. What does it take to create safety and security for us and how much is enough? We must master our sex energy, our creative impulse, our capacity to use the gift of unconditional love, pure potential, and all the amazing opportunities we have with the elements right here. We must identify and embrace our sexuality and learn to be healthy in that department as well because that has a lot to do with our creative expression. We must get clear on who we are and what our will is to contribute to in the world. Who are we going to be and what is our gift to the garden and humanity? We must learn the basics of how to love, which is really relationships, first with self and other. We must learn to create and express ourselves creatively, but most importantly, we must learn to communicate our love, our will, and our rhythms, and our needs to others. We must learn to use our imagination and think outside the box instead of being like everybody else and just being a parrot. And we must access our intuition, and we must eventually cultivate a myth so that we have some sense of direction beyond the physical end of our life or the thought of death can fill one with so much fear that it paralyzes them and they will never be a free person. Anyone who's more afraid to die than they are to live cannot be a free person. So those are some of the essential basics I feel that we need to master for freedom. And as you can see, that simple list of seven is quite a lifetime of study. So this is why you don't really meet a lot of truly masterful people that are too young. They may be very skilled at something, but often bouncing off of other walls. Um, it is a process, and it is a joy. And to the degree that one wants to really express their fullness, then mastering these basics really becomes a great joy. 
So what are my tips? One, get your hands dirty. <laughs> We're in a culture that talks way too much about everything and does far too little of most things. There's, we got more intellectual coffee shop experts than anywhere in the world. And all you gotta do is put anything on YouTube and you find out how many geniuses there are out there. Not, not that I'm criticizing, I'm just saying that's an example of our culture. They live in their heads. You gotta get your hands dirty or you're never gonna have your free will because you won't know how to create free will without learning how to create something. And your hands are a metaphor for your body. Get into it. Get into a paint shop. Get into some dirt, some clay, some wood, some stone, some fire, some earth, some water, some air. Laird Hamilton has to be a master of the water and a master of movement and all these things or he would not be Laird Hamilton. He had to go get dirty and you should too. Seek out masters. Find people who really are masters in the area that you want to gain mastery Someone who has, I can teach someone more in a gym in one hour than they might learn in a lifetime bouncing around in gyms. So find someone who has wisdom, which is the synthesis of knowledge, which takes tremendous life experience to truly cultivate. You can accelerate yourself rapidly with the help of someone uh, who has mastery. Master simplicity before complexity. Oftentimes people are embarrassed in our culture to even admit that they're studying the basics. But you watch almost any great sportsman or great martial artist, for example, or great wrestlers or cage fighters, one of the most common comments you hear when they're getting the champion trophy is, how'd you do it? Well, I stuck to the basics. I've heard that a thousand times from champions. That's what champions are. They're people that have mastered the basics and then go into the complexities when they come naturally. Um, be authentic and don't be a parrot. Being a parrot, copying other people's work, copying other people's art, copying other people's clothing styles and hairstyles and dances, that's okay for children because they're still learning how to move and, and learn to think by emulating other people. But if you want to be a free person, then you have to be free enough to be an individual. You've got to be free enough to, you know, wear your hair your way, eat your own diet, have your own exercise program, make love your own way. You know, it cracks me up how many guys are reading books on sex. Well, all you got to do is pay attention to a woman for two or three hours and she'll teach you exactly what you need to know and reading a book just makes you an American in bed, which I don't know what that means other than probably you're just not getting it. So be authentic, don't be a parrot, really go out there and be proud of who you are. I love being, I wouldn't want to be anybody in the world. Someone said you can be Buddha, Jesus Christ, Deepak Chopra, Madonna, well Madonna I'm getting close, I might tip the scale a touch, but I dig being me, and I want to encourage you to dig being you so you can truly be free, not just some fluffy concept. Okay, so that's my tip for today. That's my little two-part series on freedom. I could talk about this for hours and hours. I have lots of information about freedom in PPS Success Mastery Lesson 2, where I show you how you get mind viruses and and uh, how people use brainwashing technology to uh, get you to say, do, and act out in ways that you yourself are even baffled by, like spending money you don't have. So I hope you enjoyed the little mini-series. I'll come back with something new and hopefully interesting for you soon. Thanks for joining me today. As always, I am proud to be Paul Check.